this morning. Uh, sh- how about the, the Shining Explosion Trio? Now, they just exploded on that course, didn't they? Isn't that good? Amen. What a blessing. Um, their mamas grew up singing together. Lord have mercy. You people are getting old. I run into somebody I went to school with the other day and I thought, Lord have mercy. Is that them? They said, hey, Danny. And I went, oh, Goodness, is that, I went to school with you? Uh, it's getting scary when it's like that. Uh, but so I'm going to do what I can for the Lord. Mama always told me, she said, now, Danny, you ain't always going to be able to go like you go. And I said, you're exactly right. So I'm going to do it while I can by the help of God. So I'm going to do it like this. I'm going to do what I, I heard this morning. I heard, a, hear that story. Why did the chicken cross halfway across the road? She wanted to lay it on the line. That's what I'm going to do this morning. Man, y'all are slow. All right, take your Bible, turn to Proverbs chapter 1, please. Proverbs chapter 1. We'll look at a verse of Scripture here right quick. Proverbs chapter number 1, and uh, we'll look here in, in a verse of Scripture here that I believe will be a help to all of us here this morning, if you would. We've been thinking about Thanksgiving and being thankful being thankful. Now, I want to show you something in the Bible you might not know, and that is this. When people start getting unthankful, they start getting wicked. Look at Proverbs chapter 1 and verse number 32. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 32. For the turning away of the simple shall slay them, and the prosperity of fools 
shall destroy them. Prosperity, there's nothing wrong with prospering unless you're a fool. The prosperity of fools shall destroy them. You know what that means? That means people that get a whole lot of stuff and ain't got no sense, it'll destroy them. It'll ruin them. And that's a picture of our country today. I want to preach this morning on this subject, what's wrong with America? What's wrong with America? Now, uh, I'm going to give you two more verses here. You don't have to turn to them to introduce this message. The first one is 2 Timothy 2, uh, chapter 3 and verse 2, where he said, men in the last days will be lovers of their own selves. Uh, you couldn't have wrote that any better if it had been wrote last week. Lovers of their own selves. You know what psychiatrists and psychologists call our generation? Narcissistic. That's an invent. You can't, you can't charge somebody a lot of money for saying you love yourself. So you say you're narcissistic. <laughs> you know what that means? That means an excessive interest in yourself or physical appearance like, all I think about is me, me, me. That's what that means. Are, are we nailing it on the head yet? Amen. Lord, in mercy, he said, it said, your physical appearance or conceited or obself, obsessed with yourself. I look good in this one. And, oh, I really look good in this one. And let me show you. Let me do it with my fish lips. Okay. And they tell you, all they talk about is me, me, my. Some of you people spend half your week trying to impress everybody with yourself. And you get on Nosebook and advertise yourself. It's your own little channel. You are the star of every show. Boy, I, I ain't even read my scripture yet. And y'all done fall off, fall off the wall. But in that verse, in 2 Timothy 3, he said it'd be unthankful, unholy. I don't think it's an accident that the Holy Ghost put them two words together. Unthankful, and then they become unholy. Let me give you another verse. Another verse is in Romans 1.21 about that wicked generation that went off the deep end and turned completely uh, reprobate minds. You know what it said about them in verse 21? Neither were they thankful. Neither were they thankful. Every time you find a society deteriorating, it always starts back there somewhere for not being thankful for what God's blessed you with. Every time, every time you study it, study in history. Uh, he said, neither were thankful. Now, another word that they, they use to describe our generation is egocentric. That's another word they've invented. And it means this, that you, if you're egocentric, you have to be the center of attention. You assume that everybody feels the same way you do. Let me give you a definition of that. Here's your definition. A teacher takes her about sixth grade class, or fifth grade class out, and they go to an art gallery or something, and the teacher says, here's a pretty one, 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 and go through the whole thing. And they got these bunch of little kids about that high, and at the end... She says, now, does anybody have any questions? And one little girl said, I do. And she said, what is it, honey? She said, did you see my new snow boots? That's what I'm preaching about this morning. That kid couldn't care less about that. All she thinks about is my snow boots. They're the type of person that can come up. You be standing in a car wrecking dead people laying around, and they'll come up and say, I got that job I've been telling you about. That's what I'm talking about, people like that. Do you know anybody like that? It don't matter, bless God, the house can be on fire. And they said, do you like my shoes? And they think the whole world revolves around them and what they want and what they feel and what they like and what they don't like. Now, I ain't fussing at you for having stuff. Thank God we got it. Thank the Lord we got air conditioning. Thank the Lord we got electricity. I'm glad for all this stuff, but it'll ruin you if you're not thankful for it and appreciate it and knowing where it comes from. We in the United States have 6% of the world's population, uh, or 8%, something like that maybe, and the United States now has finally reached a net worth of $100 trillion. 
Now you put that against other countries in the world. Switzerland is second. A few other civilized countries are on third, fourth, fifth, sixth. But the big, big, big majority of the world today has nothing compared to what? Let me tell you something. Everybody in this room here today is rich by the world's standards. Everybody in here. You say, I ain't got this and I'm not, I'm poor. No, 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 no. If you've got, if you eat more than twice yesterday, let me say, I think you did. Uh, if, if, if you got more than one shirt or dress or pair of shoes, you're rich compared to world standards. Now with that thought in mind this morning, I wanna preach on what's wrong with America. You know what we did Wednesday night? We got in here and just started thanking God. We didn't have a band, a praise band. We didn't have flashing lights and smoke coming out of the altar. We just started thanking God for his blessings on us. And I mean the Holy Ghost fell in here Wednesday night. It got good. And we ought to do that this morning. Now there's, there's a few letters that I'd like to illustrate my sermon with this morning. And the first one is ants. Ants, stand up right here, right here. And don't you come back right here. Right here, there you go. And you hold up that real high so they can see it. I'm gonna use that letter B. This is my youngest granddaughter. And she is gonna represent uh, this letter B. I'm gonna let that, word, that B there this morning, I'm gonna let it represent bored. Everybody talks to young people all the time. I'm bored, I'm bored, I'm bored, I'm bored. I, nothing to do. This, uh, uh, okay, Ants, you can sit down there just for a minute. I'll call you back up here in a minute. The word bored is a word not to be used by Christians. A Christian should not even know the meaning. I don't even remember the last time I was bored. I think the last time I was bored was 30 years ago and I was in a Lamaze class. And that's the closest I've got to it. That's a, this about the most perverted, sickening thing I've ever been in in my life. And, uh, and you know what? Uh, I, I was bored, but I'm not bored. I'm not bored. I can't imagine. Once in a while, I meet somebody and they'll say, hey, Danny, come by one day when you ain't got nothing to do and I'll take you out to eat. I don't even understand that kind of thinking. Ain't got nothing to do. What in the world's wrong with you? I, if I don't have nothing to do, I believe I could get down and pray for an hour. You prayed for an hour this week? Ain't got nothing to do. I've got study. You got doctrinal studies? Have you read your Bible through this year? How many of you are gonna finish by the end of the year? Raise your hand, please. See, you ain't got nothing to do. You're bored. Lord in mercy, it's getting rough in here. I'm just now getting started. I mean, I mean, Lord, I, this week, this week our pump went out. We didn't have no water Wednesday and I had to go down to Savannah Thursday, do that wedding, we had no water. And, and Kelly came to me, she said, uh, she said uh, the water's out. And I said, oh, good night, wouldn't you know it? And it was on Wednesday and we was coming thir- Wednesday night to be thankful. And, uh, and I thought, well, maybe it ain't the pump. So I called my buddy, Eddie up there in Marion, and he, I said, Eddie, I gotta have some help, man. I gotta leave town tomorrow. And uh, so we had, uh, how many people's in there? I live in our house now. One, two, four, six, seven of us in there and uh, at the moment uh, that we know of. And uh, I, I, I'd, uh, we had seven people in there, Ash, T-Man, Frankie, uh, Marty, Ethan, Kelly, me, and they said, we all gotta get ready. We, I'd already not had a shower since Tuesday. I went and played ball Wednesday morning and got real nasty and sweat all day long. So I took buckets, they had to flush the commodes, and I got five gallon buckets and turned out to swim and pool and got down on the top of it. And I picked up water like this and I was carrying them in there. I'd set it in the house, carry it through there and there's one, there's one commode. And then I carried it in under that. And they started talking, they say, Oh, isn't that hard carrying all that water? And oh my goodness, how awful this is. And you know, you know what I told them? I said, there's been 60 centuries that we've been on this planet. 59 of them, that's how everybody got water. Everybody used to carry their water in. I know you kids can't even imagine that. You think you just turn the switch on and it miraculously comes out of the ground right into your cup. And it better be cold too or you'll fuss about that. You're bored. Listen, the old days, they'd find you something to do when you was bored. You kids don't need, oh, don't ever say, Susanna Wesley, for you ladies that are bored, Susanna Wesley had no TV. She had no 
internet, she had no iPad, she had no cell phone, she had no radio, she had no way to contact the outside world, but she raised 17 kids and two of her kids becomes one of the greatest people. John Wesley single-handedly by the power of God saved England from a revolution. Charles Wesley wrote some of the greatest hymns in that book, our song book, and he had doctors and lawyers out of them 17 kids and taught them all Greek, Hebrew, and Latin. And people say, one day when you ain't got nothing to do, come by. They're bored. Don't, kids, don't ever let your parents hear you say, I'm bored. If they say that, give them something to do, mama. And if mama's bored, I don't know if there's any hope for you or not. Next time you're bored, come, then you can come over and clean my house. You don't want to do that, do you? You want to be entertained. All right, Rachel, bring yours up here. She's going to give you another letter I'm going to use here this morning. It's an A. It's an R. It looks like an A from here. It's an R. And it means rebellious. You know what's wrong with America this morning? We got a bunch of bored people and that are rebellious and a rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. Thank you. You can be seated now for a minute. Uh, against God. I know that there's an all-wise, all-knowing, seeing God but I tell you what, I know what I ought to do better than he does. That's rebellion. The Bible said that rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. We just went through Halloween mess a couple of weeks ago and everybody's talking about how wicked Halloween is and ungodliness of the devil, and it is. I agree with every bit of that. But you know what the Bible said? The Bible said if you're rebellious, teenage, against your parents, against God, against the Bible, that it's as a sin of witchcraft. You're a witch. <laughs> That's awful, isn't it? Uh, you are a witch, or worse, if you are in rebellion against God. Here's, here's the rebellious. There's nobody going to control me. That's popular nowadays. The popular thing is nobody's going to control me. No, you're not going to control me. I'm going to do what I want. Uh, we had a kid here this morning. I think I had to send him home. Uh, said, nobody's going to tell me what to do. Nobody's going to boss me around. Buddy, we're in a rebellious time of attitude. Can you parents say amen to that right there? I saw a video of this little old, little old kid, and he was about that high, but he was about that round. I mean, he was almost a circle. And, uh, and I had him like that, and his mom, his mom had him like that, and she's saying, come on, honey. And he's going, no. No, like, no, and it hit at his mama. Listen, if I would have done that to my mama, my mom wouldn't have done nothing. My daddy would have killed me. And should. A kid that high, leave me alone. No, I seen one come out of the store a long time ago, and this kid said, I'm going to ride a pony. I'm going to ride a pony. I'm going to ride a pony. Mama had to go in the store, get changed, put quarters in that thing, and he got on there and you just grin there for a minute. You know, about two minutes, and it stopped. She said, okay, baby, let's go. I'm going to ride again. And pitched a fit, dragging across Walmart parking lot. He's like this, and Mama's going, please, please, baby, please, baby, come on. And he's going, I'm going to ride a pony. I'm going to ride a pony. Have y'all seen him acting like that out in public? You say, well, they, they got some kind of disease. They sure do. It's called S-I-N. They're a, they're a little rebel. Listen, there's, there's medicine for that and don't even cost nothing. Amen. And it's called the rod of correction. It's, a swift, it's about like that right there, except it's a stick. And you get it and lay it on top of the refrigerator because the little brats will steal it if you, don't, if you leave it somewhere there. And whenever they do that, you take it. It's about like that right there and go whoosh, whoosh. And that'll, that'll, it's amazing what that can do for HD, ADHD and all that other diseases they got now. I had that in school and I didn't even know it, doggone it. I could have got out of class all the time. I didn't know I could have got out for that. Man, if I could go over again, because I couldn't be still. That's why I'm the preacher. I don't want to have to sit there the whole church service. I want to get up here and run around. And when I was about eight years old, I would sit there and I'd wiggle in my seat. I didn't know I had a disease. I had, I'd say, teacher, I've been diagnosed and I can't pay attention unless I want to and I can't, uh, I can't concentrate unless I want to, something I like, and I'd have got medicine for that. That poor boy that shot them kids down there in Florida at that school, he said demons told him to do it, and I believe that. I believe it. 
and they'll put that poor kid in a jail and give him medicine, put him on pills where he don't even know where he's at the rest of his life. Rebels, rebels. This generation thinks if you don't win the ball game, burn somebody's car up. We don't get our way. If everything don't go our job, way in politics, why do you think these uh, snowflakes are out going to people's houses and protesting out in front of their house and burning, setting stuff on fire and threatening politicians and running them out of restaurants and stuff because it's a bunch of rebellious kids that ain't never been told no. Everything's always went their way and they go crazy when something don't go their way. Listen, if somebody gets voted in that we don't agree with, you know what we're supposed to do? pray for them, shake their hands, say, I'll be praying for you. We don't agree with them, but we act like we're adults who got some sense. We don't go out to their car and hold signs and scream at them and call them names and cuss them and stuff like that. That's rebellion. Kid told me one time, said, quit treating me like I'm a little kid. I can tell you how to get out of that. Quit acting like one. One kid had a shirt on and said, saw it, wanted it, threw a fit, Got it. I'd hate to be the parent of a kid with a shirt like that on. You know why drugs are so bad? Rebellion. You know why kids get in trouble? Rebellion. You know what? I'm supposed to do this, but I'm not going to do it. You know what will ruin your marriage? Rebellion. You know what will ruin your home? Rebellion. You know what will get you in trouble and get you, wind you up in jail and hell eventually? Rebellion. The best thing you can do this morning is say, all right, I'm going to listen to God. I'm going to let the, the, the Word of God tell me what to do. I preached that sermon on, uh, on crystal meth over there at the youth rally a few years ago. And that thing got 70,000 views on the Internet, 70,000 people who's watched that sermon on, on the Internet about crystal meth. Two or three different people put it on there, and it's all because we have a generation that says, I don't care, I don't care what anybody says. I'm going to do what I want to. All right, Kerrigan. She's going to show you the A. I'm going to use another word this morning. It's called attitude. Attitude. Have you ever heard, have you ever met people nowadays say, oh, I just don't know what's wrong with my kid. They just got an attitude. I don't know what's wrong with them. They, they get this attitude. Don't you get this attitude? I never heard that growing up. Never heard that word used. We called it full of the devil. I still call it full of the devil. They call the paddle attitude adjuster. Amen. <laughs> Amen. They got this attitude of you owe me something. Okay, Karen, you can sit down there for a minute. Unthankful, unholy. I'm telling you, brother, they, they've been bought through that car and said, I ain't driving that car. Ethan back there, uh, he, he has, uh, he's taking driver's ed now, and he said, uh, we saw some old car pull out. He said, would you drive that car? You? I said, yes, I would. Amen. If it rolled, we'd drive it. I saw, I saw a video of a kid, a little, little kid got a, got a nice car for her birthday. She's about 16, come out of about an a, a $800,000 home, and she come up and showed there, and she said, Dad, some Yankee accent there. I said, Dad, I want a red one. I want a red one, Dad. Man, I'm telling you. And they were saying, Mackenzie, Mackenzie, you can have it painted. I can't stand to be around people with that kind of attitude. It ain't painted. It's painted. It's not Clinton. It's Clinton. Do you know how to talk? Hunter, Hunter, Hunter! Well, you need an English lesson? I mean, our society's a messed up. We've got so far away from God. What are you talking about, brother? You know, listen, my first car was an old Chevrolet, and it was supposed to have been white, and somebody put black primer Spray paint primer. It looked like a Chick-fil-A cow. I'm not kidding. That's what it looked like now. And, and I, you, you, did I drive it? Yes, I drove it. I got my first ticket in that car. <laughs> I think right down there on Highway 70, I pulled out going toward Marion. Man, I was uh, getting it. That thing had three in the floor. And uh, I, I got pulled over. I think they gave me a ticket. But anyway, yes, we'd drive it. Hey, can I just say something right here? It got cold last night. It does that every year. Oh, I can't get out. It's too cold. It's just too cold. Listen, I'm, my mom used to say this. Who took me from the nice warm cot and set me on the ice cold pot? 
and made me where I could or not, me mutter. I remember she go around the house saying that. You kids don't even understand that. Listen, brother, we used to, when you got out of bed and put your foot down, the, ground, the floor was freezing because the fireplace went out that night. Listen, we lived for 59 centuries like that. All of a sudden we got this egocentric, narcissistic society that thinks everything, that's why you can't keep a church together. Least little old bitty thing, my feelings are hurt. They said something about me. He didn't smile at me. He didn't shake my hand. Lord have mercy, how are you gonna have a church and a generation of people that can't take one little bit of inconvenience if the, if the air condition goes out now, they, take, they call school off. Yeah, Boy, we'd have never went to school. I didn't have air conditioning when we went to school. You say, what y'all do in the hot weather? Open the windows. I told him Wednesday night, I didn't know what air conditioning was. I remember when I was like 10 years old, first time I fell to air conditioning. And all summer, all we wore, all I wore in the summer was a pair of shorts. No shirt, no shoes. Have y'all grew up like that? That's the way people used to do. No shirt, I didn't wear a shirt all summer. Mom didn't have to wash them. Didn't have to worry about socks. Didn't wear no shoes. Shorts and no shoes and no shirt. And the, and, and the wind, when, the, when, the, when you got sweaty, you just open the window. And after you get real sweaty and everybody, it's hot everywhere else, it don't feel that bad. And I went in the grocery store and felt that air conditioning. I went, oh my goodness. They left the freezer open or something in here. And I'm there thinking, this is weird. It's freezing cold and I didn't like it. Now let me tell you how they are at camp. My son can't go. He said, it's hot. They air conditioned the gym over there where I play all, over that college street wreck all the time. And I, they said, ain't you guys? I said, I, I, don't, I sort of liked it. I, I think you ought to be a sissy if you got to have an air conditioned gym. Look, sweating ain't going to hurt you. It's good for you. Here's the way our generation is. If it's 71, I'm, I'm burning up. I'm burning up. Do something about this. If it's 69, I, I'm freezing. It got cold. I said, Turn the heat up. As soon as it gets hot, turn the air conditioning down. They can have it on 65 in the summer, but then when it's 65 in the winter, they say they're freezing. Yeah. It's too hot. It's too cold. Did you see my boots? Hey, that's you. Amen. That's you. One girl had a shirt on and said, as a matter of fact, it is all about me. Lord, I'd hate to wind up marrying somebody like that, wouldn't you? Some of you did. <laughs> civilization is in danger when those, listen to me, civilization is in danger when people who have never learned to obey are in charge given the orders. We're in trouble when uh, you, 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 you can give orders and ain't never learned how to take orders. When that one girl said, I want to go on a date. Mama said, no, you're too young. She goes screaming in her room, slams the door, and gets on the bed and starts kicking her feet like, Aah! you have just proved that your mother's right. You, ain't got, you should play with your Barbie dolls a few more years. You are not old enough to go on a date. You can't even control your feet or your elbows. Amen, Brother Danny. Preach it. You know, you, you, he didn't eat five times a day. They said one guy, they used to come and they said, Mom... Mom had two choices on the menu when we were growing up. Take it or leave it. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> and if you didn't eat it, buddy, you done without supper because the big kids would eat it all. Now it's going back to the refrigerator. I want this. I want that. You know why you go down the road on Friday night? Say, where do you want to go eat? I don't know. Want steakhouse? Nah. Fish house? No. Had that yesterday. Pizza? No. And you ride up and down, go down to the end of 15 red lights, turn around, come back. Well, you made up your mind yet? I don't, I don't know. I don't know. What about that? No. You know what? I'll tell you what's wrong with you. You ain't hungry. You don't even know what it feels like to be hungry. Look, it's Sunday morning. Don't eat nothing from now until Tuesday. Just do it out tomorrow. Listen to me. Do it out tomorrow, and I guarantee it won't take you two seconds to figure out what you want. Cold biscuit and mater sounds real good uh, if, if, if you ain't eat nothing in two days. Our, we don't know what it's like to be hungry. We're like, here's what y'all like. You're driving down the road and your tank don't get down to three quarters and you stop and fill it up again. 
That's you. That's our generation. Well, let's move on quickly here this morning since we're having such a good time. All right, where are you at, Skylo? You come up and stand right there. Right there and then turn around and show them your, your letter. T stands for talkers. Talkers. Let me tell you what the Bible said. The Bible said in Titus chapter 1 and verse 10, for there are many unruly and vain talkers. Vain talkers. A lot of talk. Sit around and talk. Busybodies. Yak, 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 yak. Text, text, snap, chat message somehow or another we got to talk all the time since all the attention has to descend on them they are very interested nosy in what everybody else is doing they'll talk on the phone half the night text snapchat all night long turn into a smart mouth as they sit around and grab you know what our generation needs to learn how to do all right they're talkers you can sit down skylo now look at it look at this you know what your kids need to learn how to do you girls, all of you girls need to learn how to cook. You need to learn how to clean a bathroom and squirt stuff in the commode and clean the commode. Every girl in here, every boy in here today needs to learn what a wheelbarrow is and how to mix up a batch of concrete in a wheelbarrow with a hoe. See how dirty your minds are? Perverts. Hey! I'm telling you people, all we do is lay around and feed the junk of the world in our mind. That's why we're not thankful. Listen, there's people in the world that have nothing like what you've got here this morning. Every person in here ought to wave our hands at God and say, God, you've been good to me. I'm not only fed and I've got a warm place to sleep and I've got clothes on my back. I've got a house to live in, a car to drive and I'm going to heaven when I die. Last thing we ever ought to do, be complain about anything. Last thing. Talk about each other, criticize. He learned how to be a weed eater. You know, they didn't invent weed eaters to about like in the 80s, something like that. You know what we done? I got in trouble at school one time. They made us do <laughs> community service when I was about in 11th grade. And you know what we had to do? Cut weeds down below Nebo School. We didn't say, I'm going to get my lawyer and I'm going to sue you. Oh, Lord have mercy. They could have made it a lot worse on us if we had that kind of attitude. We had a sling blade, and it's a, a, a handle that long, got a charge, and you went like this. And Daddy had always taught me how to uh, run a sling blade, sling a sling blade, and then they come out with weed eaters, and you still won't do nothing. People uh, rent my mom's house. We had several renters in there, and every one of them said, man, I can't mow this grass. I can't mow this. My daddy mowed it with a push mower. His whole life. I'm not, I'm not trying to make you feel bad for having something. I'm just saying, Lord, people, we are the softiest, sissiest, touchiest, bunch of backslid babies I've ever seen in my life in our generation. Amen. Be careful of the words you say. Keep them soft and sweet. You never know from day to day which ones you'll have to eat. That means they're texts and stuff. Somebody's going to forward it on to somebody else. I know a girl got in trouble for that and got in trouble with the police for sending a picture somebody else sent her. Last. All right, Squish. Squish is going to show you one here. Hers is an S, and that's what I've been wanting to get to is spoiled. 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 Now, what does spoil mean? Spoil means in food... Milk that's gone bad and it stinks and you can't drink it. With a banana, it turns black and rotten. With a, uh, it's, it, it means to flaw, to deface, to scar. Too lenient on a child causes it to be spoiled. Like spoiled milk, spoiled meat, poison. Spoiled, spoiled. Okay, Squish, you can sit down. I want y'all to be ready here a minute. I'm going to show you something. Not just for rich kids. Not just for, Mama, I want this. Mama, I want that. Are you going to get me this? Are you going to do that? Are you going to have, uh, you, listen, I'm all for helping poor people. Listen, I pick up people all the time. We support missionaries. We run five bus routes. We give away thousands of dollars every year. Don't start that stuff on me about me being mean. I believe in helping poor people. I do it out of my pocket. I do it paying my taxes. I do it through everything. I believe it. But listen, you cannot help people by doing for them what they could do and should do for themselves. Y'all listen? 
You, can't, you ain't going to help somebody by sticking food in their mouth when they're as healthy as a bear and can go get a job. You know, there's all kinds of jobs right here in Burke County, and I know people ain't been able to find one for two years. Every time you see them, where are you working? I can't find a job. I'll see them about a year later. Where are you working? I can't find one yet. The reason you can't find a job is the same reason a thief can't find a policeman. <laughs> You're running. You're scared of them. Oh, you mean, my goodness, look what they got me doing. That's why they call it work. It ain't supposed to be fun. Hey, people. Are you listening? The prodigal son ran off and wasted his substance with riotous living, and then he came to himself. And one day he said, you know what? These people back home got it better than I have. I'm living down here and I messed up my life and everything. I'm going to go back to my father and I'm going to shut my mouth and serve God and do right. And he got his life straightened out. That's what some of you people need to do here this morning. You need to quit thinking that the whole world owes you something and that you deserve this and you deserve that. I tell you what you deserve. You deserve to go to hell just like I do. God's been merciful to us and ain't put us in hell. He's been good to us. We're saved and in our right mind, we ought to shout the victory this morning. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm telling you, telling you, I heard about these people, these kids in Africa. I'm not trying to play on your emotion. There's a missionary stood right here and told us, all you kids listening, in a, a certain village in Africa and they have big rocks he got pictures of them. And his kids sat like this all day and beat rocks with a hammer. Beat them. Bam. Bam. All day. Daylight till dark. You know where they sleep? Right there beside the rock pile. On the dirt. You know what their pay is? They get something to eat. And if they don't work, they don't eat. Now think about that now. You ain't got a bed. You ain't got a shower. You ain't got a TV. And you beat rocks all day long. Or you don't get nothing to eat. You know what they do here in America? Kids sue their parents. Corey Ten Boom. I told this story Wednesday night, and I'm telling this time on hush. Corey Ten Boom was in concentration camp over there in, in Nazi Germany when they were in Holland and they hid Jews from the Germans to try to protect them because they love Jewish people. And you know the story. You've ever seen that movie or read that book, The Hiding Place, one of the greatest, in my opinion, movies ever been. Everybody here ought to watch that video, The Hiding Place. And her and her sister got locked up in concentration camp and it was one of the worst ones in Germany. And somehow they smuggled their Bibles in there and they got their Bibles in there so they could read some scripture and the guards would come and they was always afraid that them guards would get them. If they saw them battles, they'd take them. And Corey told her sister. Her sister said, Corey, we ought to be thankful. And that place was infested with fleas. Terrible. You couldn't stand it. The fleas. And they said, Corey, thank the Lord. And she sort of looked over and said, said, even for the fleas, and she said, even for the fleas. All things work together for good. She said, I can't do that. And she finally got said, Lord, even the fleas. And they got, finally got delivered and got out of there and got out. I think Betsy, her sister, died, but she got out. And they, you know what they found out later? The reason them guards didn't come in there and get their Bibles because them guards wanted to stay away on account of them fleas. And what they thought was a terrible, terrible thing to live through was God taking care of them and letting them have his word. And we won't even read ours. I'm telling you, people, we're an unthankful generation. If you're not thankful, you'll soon be unholy. You'll be looking at stuff you shouldn't look at on your phone. You'll be watching movies you shouldn't watch. If you're unthankful, you become unholy. Amen. Now let's come back again, ants. Just get right here, honey. All right, Rachel, right here beside her. Kerrigan, right there in the middle of the table. And Skylo, Squish. That's what's wrong with America. That right there is what's wrong with America. 
Hold your horses there. The definition of brat. I thought you knew it. I looked it up. Listen to this. The definition of a brat is one who exhibits behavioral problems from being overindulged by parents. Our generation of parents ruined this generation of kids. Grandiose. You know what that means? It means extravagant, elaborate, more than you need. More, if you, if you have more than you need, house, money, car, clothes. I'm not fussing at you if you did. There's nothing wrong with it. But it'll ruin you if you're not thankful. Narcissistic. Excessive interest in yourself. Them kids in Africa have no Disney World. They have no Carowinds. They have no beach. They have no steakhouse. They have no crab legs. They have no pizza. They have no ice cream. God's been good to us here in America. I might want to have ants. Come on, brother. Y'all come move over right here. And if you're in America, you can what? You'll be rats. You used to. All kinds of ways I had that word divided up last night. When I, was, <laughs> when I was thinking, are you a brat this morning? You say, Lordy mercy, I went, got up early and took a shower and got ready and went to church and the preacher, all he done is call me a brat. Well, I tell you what you'll have to do, you have to take that up for the Lord. Uh, maybe you need to say, maybe you need to look down and say, Lord, maybe I am a brat. Maybe I am, maybe I am spoiled rotten. Maybe I am. And I'm not talking about just kids. I'm talking about me and you and all of us. All right? Let's stand by our heads for prayer. That's what's wrong with America. Let's stand. Okay, girls, y'all can sit down. <coughs> our heads are bowed and eyes are closed. It's Thanksgiving almost. <coughs> it's almost Thanksgiving. And I'm going to challenge everybody here challenge everybody here. i tell you how you can be thankful. Serve God. Go to Sunday school. Come back to church tonight. Be here on Wednesday. I mean, show God you're thankful. Maybe there's somebody here saying, Preacher, I've just been a brat and I want to just get down there. I'm going to thank God for not putting me in hell where I deserve. And we're going to, they're going to sing a song that everybody knows. And let's just enjoy it this morning. Heavenly Father, <laughs> I pray forgiveness me right now that you'll forgive me for not being thankful. Lord, you bless me way, 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 way more than what I deserve. God, I pray right now that you'd help us to be thankful. Bless our church. May a spirit of thanksgiving move on this place. Help us, dear Lord, to be blessed. God, do a work in our hearts this morning. If there's one here this morning who don't know you, help them step out of that seat and come get saved. If there's one here today, knows deep in their heart the message was for them helping to get down on their knees here this morning we'll thank you and praise you for it in Jesus name we pray amen come on come on who'll meet me here this morning and just thank the Lord let's just thank him this morning for what he's done come on, come on. Let's, let's get in here and pray this morning amen me, amen that's right as amen. I amen amen let's be thankful this morning they say, they say I yeah. have Thank God they ain't good to you this morning. But they Woo! They're so wrong this morning. Wrong Come on, that's right. Mamas, daddies, grandparents, I teenagers. Rejoicing. Enjoy the Lord this morning. You know what? I'm going to have a Thanksgiving where I'm going to thank the Lord all next week. Just thank you, Lord. Let's all sing it with them. Everybody. There's a roof up, up above. I have a good place to sleep. I have a good place to sleep. Amen. Food on my table. Food on my table. And cheese on my table. Amen. Thank you for his blessings. You gave me.
Everybody ready? Everybody. There's a reef at the You got a good place to sleep? Have a good place to sleep. I got food. Food on the table. There's a roof up above me. Have a good place to sleep. Lord of God, you've been good to There's me, y'all. Food on my table, my table, and shoes on my feet. God's been good to us, ain't he? You gave me. challenge everybody here. Today's Sunday, a week from Thursday's Thanksgiving. Let's get that mindset. You want it up to date? You go around thanking the Lord the rest of this day. Instead of griping about what you ain't got, thank Him for what you have got. You've got plenty to be thankful for. And then tomorrow, and the next day, and the next day, all this week, let's just thank Him. You say, well, Brother Danny, this ain't right. I mean, there's always something that ain't right. There's plenty that ain't right. In my life, your heart, your family, all of us, we all got problems. Well, let's start thanking him. You just go thanking him. Griping sure ain't going to help. Thank him and praise him. All right? Now, we'll meet back tonight at 6 o'clock. We're going to do something completely different. So you don't want to miss the service tonight. It's going to be good. We're going to have a good time in the Lord. Got some good singing lined up. And hopefully, we're going to have a good time. So don't miss tonight. Be thankful. Be here, okay? All right. Uh, we'll dismiss the word of prayer.